Hey guys and welcome in today's episode where I have something very small and powerful to show off to you guys and that's basically well that guy right there which is the Intel Noc 13 Pro Desk Edition what a mouthful No no <laughs> no <laughs> No I killed him with a pickaxe with this performance on a knock But this small guy right here should be more than capable to meet your everyday demands alongside maybe with some gaming so let's see what you get in the box with this Intel branded goodness right here. Let's open up the package. You are greeted, of course, by the Intel NUC itself. A very, wow, Apple-like experience, I would say. Uh, all aluminum. That's very nice to see. All right. Nice branding. This is plastic here, Intel NUC. Very nice looking, very, you know, not heavy, not light unit. And it feels very compact. That's because, well, the chassis seems to be made all out of metal. And that's very nice to see from a product like, well, like this. And what else we get in the box here? Of course, the power brick itself. You would need a power brick with this unit now, wouldn't you? So uh, you get this. Any more in here? Yes, you do get a cable, I feel it. I think it's the extension for the power cable. All right. So basically all that you get in the box for this Intel NUC right here, it's of course it's power cable and of course it's power brick. The outer case looks to be made out of two mil to spec blocks of aluminum that have been attached together with the help of four screws at the bottom offering easy access to the end consumer. It offers a pretty good quality feel to it, having a proper weight as well and apart from the looks the chassis also serves a functional purpose as well. When using the computer, you can hear the fans working and also if you touch the chassis, you can feel the relative warmth coming off the back where the exhaust vent is. The design is quite simple but elegant and functional as the side honeycomb shapes are actually holes that allow for airflow to reach the heatsink and even though this pattern continues on the bottom, the ones there are not functional as they have been blocked off. That's where the motherboard sits, so I do guess that ventilation holes there wouldn't have served much purpose anyway as there is a whole lot that's crammed into such a small space, so the whole bottom part is pretty much occupied. The top part of the NUC is made out of glossy white plastic and since this is where our wireless 6E and Bluetooth antennas sit, I don't think they break the style of this unit in any way. Moving now to the port situation, we will start at the business side and that's the back I.O. where you have an immersive array of options given the size of the unit. We have four DisplayPort outputs in the shape of two HDMI 2.1 and two Thunderbolt 4s that, as you have seen in my example, are compatible with two times DisplayPort 1.4a via a USB Type-C connector. Alongside with them, we have a 2.5 gigabits Ethernet connection and two more USB Type A ports, one of them being 3.2 and the other one being 2.0. Apart from the ports themselves, you have the power that's incoming from that 120 watts power brick, and on top of them all, we have the very Apple like style vent that is carved into the aluminum body. Moving to the front I.O. This is simpler but still it's offering us a lot more in terms of connectivity with the help of its two USB-A 3.2 ports alongside with the headphone jack and of course our power button. This power button as well is made out of aluminum and contributes to the overall package by maintaining the general looks and premium feel. This specific model that I have right here runs on the Core i5 Raptor Lake CPU that's pretty strong for day-to-day -day use with its 12 cores and 16 threads, out of which 4 are performance cores and 8 being efficiency cores. This SKU comes with 8GB of DDR4 RAM that's clocked at 3200 MHz, but this can be easily upgraded by opening up the bottom of your machine and installing different sodiums in there. It takes a maximum of 64GB in its two dedicated slots, so basically you can get a maximum of two 32GB of dedicated DIMMs in this little NUC. For storage, it comes with a single M.2 2280 Gen 4 NVMe SSD that's rated at 512GB, but this as well can be easily upgraded. And you also have one other M.2, this is a 2242 PCA Gen 3 or SATA connector that you can add for extra storage. 
Of course, you can easily add external storage as well by using one of the mentioned high-speed USB connectors on the NUC itself. So to get things started, installing this is not very complicated. It's only a problem if you are using a display port cable like I'm using right here. But no threat, you can definitely use one of these adapters that goes from a display port basically to a USB Type-C that is supported on the Thunderbolt 4 without any sort of issues. Actually, the Thunderbolt 4 port can actually support a DisplayPort 1.4, so that's pretty nice and plug and play. So everything now is set up and ready to go. As you have seen, I have used an adapter. That's because, well, this monitor basically comes with a DisplayPort cable and that doesn't have a DisplayPort, but I have an adapter, so everything should be nice and good. We are hooked up to power, hooked up the monitor, so let's basically boot it up and see what happens. You can, of course, uh, Inception, uh, you can, of course, go and do, of course, some rendering with 4K videos on this puppy right here. That's not going to be an issue. It's definitely more than capable of handling mundane day to day tasks like web browsing and the such. And of course, this being the case, then definitely, you know, it's, it's up for the game. It's up for the task. I mean, it's a good working bench solution, or I should say it's a good working PC. Of course, especially if you are going to upgrade that most important RAM that is needed in there, because this Q once again has only 8 gigabytes of VRAM, or I should say of RAM allocated to it. And this is definitely not enough in this day and age. I mean, let's just take a look at the task manager right here. Uh, performance tab, yes. So this is the 13th gen Intel Core i5. It's well named, it's 1340p. It's, it is what it is. And you have, of course, that aforementioned close to eight gigabytes of RAM in there, which is only rated at 3,200 megahertz. Windows is doing Windows stuff. So anyway, 3,200 megahertz, that's, that's the frequency it operates at. And of course, you know, you could install faster SSD in here. And definitely this is the Intel Iris XE, uh, which of course shares, well, four of the total eight gigabytes of VRAM allocated to it. You could go ahead and, you know, allocate more video memory to it, but you know, you only have eight in total. So just running the operating system. And I think I only have, what, this is Microsoft Edge right there. Yeah, you are using five gigabytes of RAM as it is. So definitely it needs an upgrade for RAM. Okay, so I guess everybody's dying to see if this Intel NUC can actually do some gaming. And for that, we are going to try a few titles, a few optimistic titles. Uh, we're going to start off with Hogwarts Legacy. Then probably we're going to move on to Battlefield 5. And of course, we're going to try out the Epic Fortnite because, well, it's less graphical intensive and probably is going to do us maybe some good with some gaming. I don't know. We're going to see how competitive gaming is on this very tiny, puny, little tiny NUC. It's not your fault. I know you only have eight gigabytes of VRAM, or I should say RAM, but anyway, that's upgradable, so it's not entirely your fault. This is just the skew that I have right here. So unfortunately, we are off to a very rough start. That's because, well, first of all, I've updated the driver. We're up to date on the newest driver right here, but that's not the issue. The problem is that we're limited by the only, well, eight gigabytes of VRAM available to us. And I say VRAM, that's because the eight gigabytes of RAM, of course, is being shared by the graphical uh, side of the processing unit right here. This is the Intel iris xc which of course shares in into that ram so if you upgrade your ram then you're probably going to be better off than with the starting package or the skew that i have right here this is basically battlefield 5 1080p all low settings and i can't even get it to run in full screen mode and that is just a bummer i mean <laughs> this is unplayable this is unplayable for sure it says 15 fps it actually feels like worse but uh, hey, who am I to judge, right? MSI Afterburner definitely knows what it's doing. And this goes like crap. So I'm going to try another one of my favorite titles right here, which is, of course, Hogwarts Legacy. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look really good either at the start. And as you can see, we are just using around three gigabytes of RAM inside the menu only. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, go and try and play on the... Ah! <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> Check this out.
Yes, not enough video memory for Hogwarts Legacy. So once again, I'm sorry about all your AAA fans right there. They were probably looking to game on this. I would reckon that there are not that many of you out there, but still, as a point of concept, you can't really play AAA games not on 8 gigabytes of RAM in this day and age. It's not necessarily the computer's fault because, well, it is just underpowered. But uh, hey, what about some Fortnite? I mean, this, well, you know, rather less intensive graphical game should be performing better and uh, well I'm pretty sure there may be people out there who are pranked by an Intel NUP and probably do some light gaming like this although it's quite competitive oof oof this performance <laughs> uh, okay it's, it's something or it looks horrible <laughs> what is this so 8 gigabytes of VRAM is definitely not enough even for something that looks like this? I mean, come on, what is this? Hey, hello, kill me, I have a pickaxe. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I killed him with a pickaxe? With this performance on a knock? Oh, come on, what's happening here? Who's playing like a 10 year old? This is <laughs> way too much fun I'm having this review. But the performance, okay, there we go, there were trees. <laughs> there were trees. <laughs> Oh my god! Yes, so this is my review of this guy right here. Well, it definitely has true potential as you have seen with the games. You can do some light, of course, competitive gaming. Just upgrade that VRAM because that lag and stuttering is not going to get you anywhere near the top charts. And definitely you could play some AAA games as well on this, but you definitely have to once again upgrade the RAM. Now, this Q, I don't think this is made for gaming. It's definitely not made for gaming. I'm just sarcastic a little bit here. But uh, yeah, if you upgrade the RAM to up to 64 gigabytes, I think even with 32 gigabytes, you should be more than fine of just using this for some gaming at least. And if you don't want to use it for gaming and you want to stick to the Pro Edition that's in the name, then definitely 8 gigabytes of RAM should be okay for some light web browsing, doing some 4K video, like watching some 4K video, not editing. And yeah, this is what is going to get you. I mean, the overall package looks absolutely amazing. I love the connectivity on this guy. You could definitely uh, increase the amount of potential with, uh, you know, four 4K displays if you want to do that. These ports can actually go 4K 60 Hertz on all the ports here. And that's something absolutely amazing for this Intel Iris GPU in here, or I should say iGPU. And yeah, the connectivity in the package form, it's absolutely impressive. Well done Intel, I think this looks rather nice and premium and I overall like the feel and this I could say it's a quality product. Not only that, but the fact that the manufacturer actually allows you to open up this guy and upgrade it as you see fit, it's something really unheard in this day and age and I very much like that aspect of it as well. Okay guys, so if you like this video, you know what to do. It really helps out the channel a lot. If you just, you know, it's free, hit that subscribe button down there and maybe that notification bell. And thank you guys for being so awesome. Leave your thoughts and comments down in the box below. I always do my best to read through all of them. And until the next one, stay safe, peace out and be kind.